within the um, paradigm of a 4 for one match, a really good functioning team with great chemistry will beat just a bunch of individuals thrown to together. So, And Harry Kane can't do that. He can't do that. He have individual awards, but he doesn't have anything with Tottenham. So, And he won't. Yo, yo, guys, it's your boy, HH, the boy, HH. I've got my main man, Dominic, here. And I think, look, man, this is a club that people have been looking forward to and sort of. And I think even before we even get to any kind of football discussions and so forth, I think this is good because I think people will definitely like to hear this. So how did you decide that? I want to go into YouTube talking about football and stuff. Was there a... Can you remember a particular point that well, I want to I want to do, do this or anything? So how did you even get into the yeah. game and then be, become this big YouTube dude? Well, first of all, I'd like to say hello to everybody watching this right now. Have hope, man. It's been a long time coming. I've known of you since I actually started making the videos. Before I used to watch Football Daily, I used to be an avid watcher of Football Daily every day to keep up with the football and news. But then after a while, and no disrespect to Football Daily, but it just kept being stale and stale. And, and I'm like, what? Something is a little off here, you know? So I was, you know, always watch the Premier League since I actually moved out from my father's um, basement back in like 2013. Before that, I never really cared. I, I'm going to keep it real. I never really cared. I was an international football guy. World Cup come around, that's me. You know what, club, I'm like, I don't really care. But once I moved out and I had the time, watch the Premier League. I could actually remember when Frank Lampard came to play for Man City. I was like, you know, that was kind of weird. But I was on my own. I used to DVR everything. Watch the, the games for years, Champions League for years, you know what I'm saying? And finally, in 2017, early 2017, when Barcelona played PSG in that second leg, after being 4-0 down, 4-0 down after the first leg in, in France, I'm watching the game, picked up my two daughters from school. They were very, they were three years young. They're, pretty, they're still young. And I'm watching the game. I'm on the highway, a lot of traffic. I'm coming home. I'm watching the game, you know, Cavani score a goal. They celebrated. But then Barcelona just kept scoring. I can't remember everything. But then something just told me, because I used to make videos with my, my, my girlfriend then, little reaction videos on YouTube, so I knew about the YouTube thing. Someone just told me, take out the phone and just talk about this game. And that was the first time I actually did. The video got 10,000 views. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what is this thing? I have to do this again. You know what I'm saying? I have to keep doing this. And I kept coming up with ideas, ideas, ideas. And then that was it. It was a wrap since then. I, I just kept releasing, releasing videos, a lot of videos just to cover football on a broad level. And then, you know, I was I was a neutral. So a lot of people see me as a City fan. I was a neutral before, but mm. because I had the channel, I had to carry a club. Just like you carry a club secretly. Yeah, complicated <laughs> Chelsea fan. Complicated yeah, yeah, yeah Chelsea exactly. Fan. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an avid Chelsea fan. I'm not a Chelsea fan, a City fan. But I like to, I, I always like to allude to the, the, the fact that People like to say, oh, you're just a City fan the other day or whatnot. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, you knew your wife since you were born, huh? You know, you have to meet the love of your life sometime or the other. You know what I'm saying? So whether you're a City fan from next last week or last month or whatever, you chose to make that decision, but mm. you have to stick to it. The yeah. problem is when people switch around. City is the only club I support, mm. like avidly. The other clubs I watch, you know what I mean? I watch the, the games as a neutral and all of that sometimes. Or watch the games as a City fan, but I'm a City fan. So that's my whole story. And that's how I came to, you know what I mean, grow the channel to 30, almost 34K subs and 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 going, going strong. Yeah, no, I mean, for me, I mean, my story is sort of similar, you know. Um, again, basically, basically, for me, so basically, I used to do... Um, movie reviews with my brother, you know. Mm -hmm. And we just do movie reviews and stuff. So after a film with Finch, we we'll do, we'll do reviews. Then afterwards, again, for me, like I say, my two loves are football and films. Like my love for football is exactly the same as my love for, for films. And I always say, I see, as much as I'm, I'm like a Chelsea fan, I'm a football fan foremost. And the reason why we are similar is I love Premier League, things like that. I'm about Champions League, 
World Cup, Euros, and thingy. There is no, and we'll probably get into this in this in a conversation. There is no bigger prize, no bigger competition than the World Cup. It is the greatest com- is the greatest sporting competition in the world. Facts. 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 So, so my thing is, um, I was like, wait a minute, because remember this is back in 2010. You know, I was yeah. like, wait, there is no reaction to any of these matches. Exactly. So I'm not going to talk because again, I've been watching the Champions League since 1995. You know, when Ajax won it. Yeah. And like Champions League has always been a thing that I've all lot of said, wait a minute, but would it be to be cool if somebody could just react to these big, massive matches? And I know that many people are watching, but there's nothing to say, look, let me just do some reactions. I remember like, so the first real video that's caught thing was the, in, so this was 2010, mm-hmm. the Inter Milan Barcelona second leg. When in, when Inter Milan, that's they lost one zero. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 yeah but, but they won three to nine. And that was when people, all oh, the Mourinho things, I was oh, what this is cool. Then slowly, as the years went by, I invested in better sound, better cameras. I understood the green screen. I changed my my sound thing and everything. I was like, okay, boom, let's go. So, and I think that, you know, the in the last few years, I said, wait a minute, when you just look at oh, the rise of all these other YouTube channels and what YouTube has become and how media has changed, you know, um, I was like, whoa, 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 you know, this can be a career. Like, for me, I thought, okay, this is just a pastime. I've got to get a job. So I did some horrible jobs. I did some horrible 95 jobs. I said, look, I can, this can't be a real thing. And even my mom would be saying, look, you can't make money in this stuff. But you get a job, get a proper thing. But as I went through and I saw all the channels, and I, and I saw specifically the, the football YouTube thing rise, yeah. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. There, there can be something here. Because we're dealing with the biggest sport in the world. And what you're finding is especially audiences, especially younger audiences, they are more drawn to the people who are much more animated, much more entertaining, have a, a bit more bites and say things that you just don't see on, on TV. Yeah. So, yes, yeah. and I think that's, that's the real thing. So I was like, you know, let me provide the, the people something. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's the same here. You know, I try not to overthink things too much. It's like, if you watch a game, just talk about the game, give your thoughts on the game. It might not get 10,000 views, but, the 500 people that watch it definitely appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? And you know about you, what I did too. I went back and I checked your video. I'm like, this guy from 2010? I went back and I checked the videos from South Africa 2010 and, and there you were. I'm like, the longevity, man. You know what I'm saying? Over but the no, years. But, but no, the, the thing though is that, and this is the key thing. Because people say, oh my gosh, you've been doing it since 2010. How come you don't yeah, have, you should have more, you should not have more subscribers and everything. But say, people don't, don't understand. I love football. Yeah. I don't really care about the whole stuff. So even if I had a job, even if I had a, a great paint job, see, right now, my job is, it's all right. This is pretty, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's pretty good. But even if I had that, I love the World Cup. And I would, I just love talking about football. So the World Cup thing, yeah. I don't even really care, but I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so into this. As soon as I finish, boom, let me react to it. Yeah. And what I do is I just put it out there and I and I wait for the next game. So I don't exactly. really look at the comments. So like, yeah, I just yeah. do it, get my excitement out. Just I'm do like, it for the love, game. man. You do it for the love. Yeah. You know, you, you're not going to stop because of the results. You're like, ah, oh, it's not doing well. Let me stop. And you know what? You know what's interesting about both of our channels? And you may, I don't know if you realize that, but you and I were the only two guys to did a preview and a review for every single match. Do you know what? Do you know the funny thing? Because I remember I was just like browsing through and like, you know, sometimes they will do like related channels. Yeah. If channels share something. And I was and I said, why does this Dominic Rich keep on getting related to my thingies? <laughs> so I clicked once. I better say, this guy, just like me, is the only dude every World Cup that is yeah. doing previews and yeah. reviews of all, this, of all the other things. And I think it's because I'll probably get to this in this whole conversation is our appreciation for those international tournaments. And yeah. I think the thing is where you find is that look, club game is huge. And, and the clubs are huge, Champions League is huge. But there is something, for instance, during the walkabout, I would get thousands of views for a game involving Iran. Because yeah. see, the thing about this is that when it's a World Cup, I am genuinely interested in every single country because because see for me i went to an international school when i was young so when i went to international school it's made me really 
um, appreciate and, and have like and, and the end for learning about other people's cultures. And I love learning other languages, cultures, and people from other countries. So when the World Cup comes, the World Cup is about wow, look at these guys who they speak this way, they have these, these kinds of names, this is their culture. Look at their, their supporters, look at and so every single country I am hyped for. Yeah, and yeah, I won't, yeah, and, yeah. and I'm, I really want to just see them do it and because I love the whole David the, the, the Goliath, the small team trying to be the bigger team, and because that's so big, and I think people can see my passion for their country, despite yeah. of whatever they are, and, and that's and that's something that the World Cup only only gives you. So yeah, it's all about it's all about passion too, man. That that's what keeps me going as well. I remember from 1998, that was my first World Cup. What just got me like so driven to watch the games? Every game, I would watch every single game possible. That's the thing with me. I'm not just watching the country that I'm, I'm supporting at the World Cup. I'm from St. Vincent. My country never been to the World Cup, so I have to adapt the country or just be a neutral. But the thing is, what excites, excites me is the, the star players on each team and then the players that do well then turn, then gets a transfer to a big club. And then you get to see that player blossom and develop. And then you wait for the next World Cup and the next one and the next one. And then, you know, it's just, mm. it, it's just the passion, man. It's just the fire. You know, when you get excited, you know, about something, that's how I feel about football and, 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 and in general. When City are playing, I'm excited. You know what I'm saying? Champions League, any, any champ, when it, when it comes to the Champions League, anything, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped. Even the, even the playoffs, even the qualifiers, I'm hyped for the qualifiers. Well, no, no, you're not, because I feel so, because I think, because people say that, people would say that it is boxing. But you you remember back in like the days during how when gladiators used to fight back in in Rome and, and sort of, and they had that kind of atmosphere of the people and and because yeah, which is yeah. perfectly shown in the film Gladiator. Gladiator, but, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, okay, but 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 when you look at some of those Champions League games, especially against those those big teams, it is there's there is that same energy I believe is there where this just feels massive. This just yeah. feels like there is something truly. Because uh, th because for me, obviously all football is great because I love all football, but when the stakes are really high and it's really meaningful, there is nothing, very few things in this world can get me more hype than that. Like yeah. a big Champions League game, a big World Cup game, a big Euro game where, where it's the best players, the best against the best. Nothing is better. Nothing is better. Nothing is better. It's, it's, it's too hype, <laughs> way too hype, you know? So, And, you know, just talking about passion, man, you know, last summer, Last summer, right? It was so hectic, I'm telling you. I I was talking about the Copa. I, 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 look, I, I have a full-time job that I wake up 5.30 every day to go to until 2.30, sometimes 6.30. And I would never miss a game still, you know? And last summer, there was the Gold Cup, the Copa America, the African mm. Cup of Nations. And I made sure I covered every single match for all three tournaments. And it's just because of the passion. I just couldn't let myself miss a game, you know, to talk about. Even if I didn't watch it, I would watch highlights. I just, you know, it was, it was just, for me, I, I, I couldn't I couldn't miss a game. And that's just what keeps me going. Because this thing could get a bit stressful if you focus too much on numbers and results. But you can't. No, you know what I'm saying? Do you know, no, no, between, do you know what I learned? Because before... I used to be about kid and views, the subs and subs. How many subs do I get from views? But then what I found is, and I think only the last few months, especially doing live shows, is your core audience. Definitely. I see. Now, obviously, the YouTube thing is that, you know, a thing you should know is with every video, you should always be mindful of trying to get new people. So what's the latest news? What's happening right now? As soon as 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 soon as, as soon as the breaking news happens, quickly react to it. Because yes. the quicker you do it, the more chance you have of new people latching onto it. So that should always be yeah. like, that's a standard you to practice. But what you should always focus on is maintain that core audience, serve that core audience. And the thing is that some, see, there are some people who know that come Euros, World Cup, Nations Cup, there are, there are two channels you'll go to. Yeah. It's Half of Football Hot and Dominic Rich. Definitely. Because they know that without doubt, because these guys have been doing it, that I'm going to get a preview. I'm going to get a re review, and they're going to cover every single game. Yeah, yeah, and, and they're going to show a true passion of off covering every single game all the, all the way through. And that is your core audience that, that you're serving, you know? And yeah. the thing about it is that the passion we have for those tournaments, you wouldn't get it from a being sports 
and NBC exactly. ABC, because those guys are like you know it's more reserved and proper. But yeah. put us on say the football is the football isn't golf. Football is the regular common man sport. Yeah. So the analysis should reflect that of like we are just excited about this as you. Football fans are like, oh, goal, yeah, goal. Like, you, know, you know, they're like this and everything. So that should be reflected in the analysis, you know, so. And I think one reason why people actually come and watch us is that they could actually relate as a, as a you know, a regular person, you know, you and I, they, they could just come and they hear what we have to say. And they could be like, okay, okay, I, I feel the same way as well. Instead, you watch the TV, sometimes you feel like these guys might be overly, overqualified and you you i don't know whatever they say you might actually believe them sometimes you know what i mean but with us somebody might say man you're talking crap and we might say oh, oh, uh, you know it's just my opinion that's why i i just love to interact with the people in the comments and just keep the videos coming you know i watch your videos as well and you could just see it's organic you know what's up guys it's the kid 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 you know what i'm saying and you, you you don't get that on your ESP and your Sky Sports no. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So with me too, my character comes out as well. You know what I mean? Like I might do a, a, a lot of funny things sometimes and people like that. Mm. But it, it, it goes back to not overthinking things or feeling like if you're qualified enough to, to talk about this. Anybody is qualified. It's just an opinion. You give me your opinion. opinion, I give my opinion. You might have a different style or, or better understandings of strategies and tactics i may not i may talk about other things that you might not touch you know what i'm saying i might give mm -hmm. a different perspective a more emotional perspective of the game than you might have or you might do it better than i do so mm -hmm. that's what you know that's what i love about this whole thing no no no, no but, but i think it's, it's funny that you said the whole analysis things like, like look i would say like i've owned almost every management scheme and I have studied for football quite a bit in my own thing because I've because like when I was young, I watched every football match. I was full obsessive about every single my magazine. So yeah, I have a very, very basic understanding of formations and tactics. But the key thing is that people don't want they don't want to be bored to death with tactics and everything. Yeah. What, see, that's why if let's say you're a viewer, would you rather watch two, three guys in suits in a studio? talk about formations over that or would you rather watch perfect example like how you started the in the aftermath just think about it put yourself in the view of you in the aftermath of that i call it the miracle at camp no in the yeah. aftermath of that psg barcelona game would you want to go to guys say man you know what is it that's you know um psg did and everything like that and let's try and break down where it's wrong. Or do you want the guy saying, what the hell happened there? You're like, whoa. Well, yeah, yeah, you know? because, yeah. you remember, because, because everybody everybody was like, what on? It is one yeah. of the most shocking games of all time. Yeah. So you won't start to replicate. Again, like my most, my biggest video is 7-1. Mm -hmm. Because that is the most infamous thing. So I don't want to hear about how did Brazil tactically go wrong in 7-1. I want to, yeah. I want someone to be like, what? I want someone to react how I am reacting and feel how I am how I'm feeling as in I because again I didn't for the first two minutes I didn't say anything in that video because I was like <laughs> the most <laughs> that, yo, thing I've ever seen in my life. I actually watched that game. I, I watched most of the World Cup games that were on TV. That seven one was shocking, man. That was shocking. No, no, that no, no, no. I, I, you know, I, I still haven't seen the game from beginning to end. Because I think when Germany scored the fourth or fifth, I left the, the room. Because I was watching it with my brother, and there was a, a girl that he brought over. I remember, like, at five, I just left the room. Because I said, like, I, feel, I actually even feel embarrassed just being in the room and watching this. So I was like, I can't watch it because this is a Brazil. <laughs> it's Brazil. So they're at home. They're at home. It's, you know? it's, 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 no, no, because again, see, I have. Brazilian blood on my mom's side, you know, oh, and, on, okay. and unfortunately, like I couldn't, because I, I have two, I had two uncles, older uncles who were Brazilian, but unfortunately, I couldn't meet them before they died and everything. But my mom always used to tell me about how football mad my uncles were, and and sort of, and how Brazil, these guys, football is huge. So for that to happen on their home soil and so forth, like it is one of the, so it is, I would argue, it is the most shocking sporting moments of all time one of the most humiliating you know, you know, the most humiliating easily 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 
to the I wanna, that is worse than how Germany humiliated Saudi Arabia at the World Cup. Oh, um, no, 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 way more, way more. No, because this is this is a World Cup semi. Yeah. This is Brazil on their yeah. home soil. Yeah. You know, Germany are, are, are different. So, when let mm. me let's bring this to Man City. Okay. <laughs> let's bring this to Man City because you see, I want to I want to start with Pep. Yeah. I want to start with Pep Guardiola because see, this is much more my thing with Pep is. And I want to know what we think about this. I I use the kind of um, this kind. I I kind of like make make a difference between these two concepts: mm -hmm. a manager and a coach. Mm -hmm. And I believe that manager and coach these are two different things. They're not the same thing. And what I want to say about Pep Guardiola is that he is a very very good coach, a really good, good coach, an amazing coach. He's not so much a great manager because you see. A manager is someone who thrives when the going gets tough, when things aren't so good. And a manager has a plan B, a plan C, and a plan D because he's there to manage situations like, all right, this guy's out. We'll change this for information. All right, we're not playing well. Let's try this tactic and just eke out this game. Like Ferguson was a, the king of that. He always knew that no matter what, I can manage this situation. I can create a new team. I can get this player to, 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 to do these other things. I can maximize the, the, the talents of this player. I don't really need the best players. I can maximize them. But for Pep, he has a philosophy. This is how we play. Like, yes, yeah. he has tweaked it a bit from the Barcelona days because I, because you could argue that um, one of his best teams was the Man City 100 points team. Yeah. In terms of how they played, how they dealt with 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 teams, and how they totally destroyed what people consider is the most competitive league. Yeah. And again, as I said again, look at what he did with Sterling. Like he is the reason. Like yeah, the player yeah, has to train and everything, but he is the reason why Sterling is at this level because he just taught him a few things of the trade of like runs to make, timing of the runs, how to utilize the, the ball, how to put yourself in specific. And pockets in the area of the pitch. But I just think though that's that when you look at city season and, and so forth, a manager would know that attacks are great, defense are what win, win your leagues. Yeah. So as soon as La Laporte went down, we need a new defender. Even before that whole thing, you print by saying that we need to have a strong de defense. John Stones just isn't up to that level. Otamendi yeah. is injury prone. Fernandinho is not a natural central yeah. defender. So he should have preempted saying, okay, we must all, we, we, I know I've got the attack, I know I've got the amazing attack, but we have to have a strong defense. I mean, when we get to Leroy Sane afterwards, but yeah. what is your view? Do you believe I'm right or wrong in saying that Pep, not so great a manager, but a much better coach and management is maybe what is his weak point? Well, I agree with a lot what, of what you said, but I would say that he is both a good manager and a good coach, but a better coach than he is a manager. Because manager, you know, the first word, the root word, man, management. Yeah. So when, you, when, when it comes to man management, it's like dealing with the whole Sane situation a lot better. I think since the 2018 World Cup when Sane was snubbed by Germany, that Sane should have been involved a lot more. For City should have got way more starts than he did, and that frustrated the player. I know you said we'll get to Sane, but Pep Guardiola, he is a man that's he wants to stick to his philosophy. Yesterday, Mendy, we were beating Liverpool off the park, but Mendy somewhat run from the he ran from the left side with almost to the right side of the field with the ball, and Pep was furious because that's not the style of football he plays. You don't hold on to the ball that long. Get the ball away. You have the ball. You look for a man, pass the ball. You move. Look for the ball again. Mendy, he was dribbling. He did a great, and he almost made a mistake. Imagine if that led to a goal and Liverpool came back and drew the game. Because it could happen. Mm. So I agree with what you say. Like Pep Guardiola, he wants to stick to something. And a lot of times, if that plan does not work, we lose the game. But the majority of the time, it works. Yeah, It works. And it works because um, of the, 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 the beautiful football that, that City play and the players that he has at his disposal. It would have worked this season, even if we lost eight times, but Liverpool were just better. 
the if Liverpool were losing eight times, like we we are losing, it would have been a title race. But they were just exceptional. You know what I'm saying? So we can't be overly critical of what City did this season as well, even though we, we can be critical, but not overly critical, because we are way ahead of third and we are way ahead of second. Um fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. We're way ahead of these teams. We're about 10 points, 11 points ahead of them. So we can't be overly critical. We just have to give Liverpool the praises for what they have done. Okay, so, so cool, because again, because I want to bring in the Champions League at Man City, but I want to go to Leroy Sane. So this is what I've always said about the whole Leroy Sane thing. He was always going to leave. He knows, because again, remember, we're living in a world of social media and yeah. players because social media. So players are very aware about what the world thinks of them. So Leroy Sane would know that, we, even before Leroy Sane goes on social media, he'll know that, yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty good. I think yeah. I'm, I'm skilled. Then he'll go on social media and guys will be like, wait, why is Sane on the bench? Why is he on the bench? Why is Sane not playing? And Sane will be like, wait a minute. Yeah. I know I'm good. Mm -hmm. The people online are saying I'm, I'm good. Why am I on the bench? And this is what I've always said. Leroy Sane is a more talented, dangerous footballer than Sterling. But Raheem Sterling is much more of a pep player. Because Raheem Sterling is excellent at listening and adhering to instructions. I was but thinking Le the same thing. I was thinking the same. Yeah, Sane is exactly. a little bit more rebellious. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you see, see, Leroy Sane, see, Leroy Sane is the, see, if I was a manager, Leroy Sane is the kind of player that I like, where this is a blueprint. But we've all played football before. If that blueprint isn't working, interpret the game, do something. You have agency to try and win me the game as an individual. And Leroy Sane can take it upon himself to be like, you know what? Let me just carry this ball through. Let me weave through and let me just take 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 a shot. Exactly. Sterling wouldn't necessarily because Sterling would look at okay, what's the pass? What's the pass? What's the pass? What's 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 the given goal? What's the run? So I think there are times in which Pep will be like, No, 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 no. You're going to away from the paradigm and, and the in, in instruction. Exactly. Let's stay here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think the thing with Sane is that, look, like Hansi Flick from Ban, he called it. He said, mm. I want you. <laughs> we have a number saved for you. Yeah. So when a player says, so, so when a player, if the manager calls you personally, says we have a number specifically for you as well. And you see, the thing about it is that Hansi Flick isn't, isn't stupid. And, and look at how Bayern Munich play. Yes, they have a system and so forth, but I think there's a little bit of a freedom Mm. For guys to express themselves in Bayern as opposed to um, Pep, because in, in Pep he's a micromanager. Because you can always tell the manager. Let's see, Pep is like Conte, or like similar so, I mean, where like the manager that's at the touchline always thingy, he's micromanaging. But when you look at An Ancelotti, you look at um, any of these other dudes who they rarely are at the touchline. They just say, "Look, I've given you instructions. Go, go do your thing." Yeah, yeah. Those guys are are different. So do you? Would you have wanted Pep and City to fight more to keep Leroy Sane and maybe manage the playing time better between him and Sterling? Or it is well, what it is. Sterling is just much more of a Pep player than Sane would ever be. Okay. My take on this is it's hard. It's difficult. How are you going to drop Sterling? You know what I'm saying? And Sane is somewhat of an understudy to Raheem Sterling. So Sane basically takes that role, but he's not happy with the role. Sterling won't be happy with the role, and he's too good to keep on the bench. Then you have the headache of Mares. He's too good to keep on the bench too good. on a consistent basis. Then you have the headache of Bernardo, who is a bit more compliant, who is a bit more, you know what I mean? He'll work with you more and play different positions and come off the bench. Yeah, he's, he's that type of player. He's Pep's kind of player. But Sane is a rebel. Look at the man's face. Look at just the attitude. You know, you can tell just like he's just the, his pouting and everything. His, yeah, you can, you, tell, you can tell. Yeah, you can tell. And if you watch the way Sane plays, and you mentioned it, Sane holds on to the ball longer than any other City player, maybe with the exception of Riyad Mahrez. But Sane is an individual type of player who's going to want to take things on his own and make it happen. And he has done it in the past. But... You know, it's like a kid when you're like, yo, man, stop doing that. Stop doing that. You, something's going to happen, but they keep doing it. But then they end up and they surprise you and do something exceptional, but you still, it's not your philosophy. It's like, yo, I told you to stop. I know you're doing well, but stop doing that. 
after a time, it's like that player is going to blossom so much that it's going to hard to hold him down. Because if you have Sterling, who's keep he's keep get, he's getting better and better and better. Maris is getting better. You have De Bruyne, you have all these guys. You have it's hard. You have Foden coming through. Sane is like, look, look, Bayern is over there on their wings. They're using Perisic, who's been playing for God knows when. Mm. You have Coleman always injured. You have Gnabry, who could uh, play on the other side. If they call me and they say, listen, we have the number for you. We want you. You're from Germany. You wanted mm. to play for Bayern Munich when you, were, you, you, you came out of the, um, the uterus anyway. And Son is, is a no-brainer. He's going to start. He's going to start for Bayern. No, start. no, 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 no. Because, because the thing that you mentioned, Perisic, who hasn't really worked. But the king thing is Kingsley Coman. Mm. Kingsley Coman just hasn't grabbed onto that position. So, Sani knows that this isn't a Raheem Sterling situation. Exactly. He knows that Kingsley Coman just hasn't really set the world alight. Because Sterling, you could argue, mm. in those previous two... Because I said that you could make an argument that Sterling should have maybe been an argument for the Ballon d'Or based on his contribution to a 100-point season. He was, yeah, he, was, yeah. he was key. So, Perisic isn't doing that. Coman isn't doing that, and Coman just, just hasn't been able to stamp down on that position. So Sani knows that I am going there as a marquee player. And also, Hansi Flick knows that the future of Germany, mm. German national football, is Janambri on the right exactly. and, um, and Leroy Sani on the left. That, that is what is going to be used for, yeah. for, for Germany. So Bayern Munich are like giving Germany a framework of what is going to be there for the next five, six years. So he knows that. Exactly. I, I think, look, it's the it's the right move. I can't be selfish with this. I'm mad. I'm mad, but I can't be selfish. It's what's best for the players. Sane is my favorite City player, or he was. He's no longer with the club, and I'm pissed off that Pep did not make the man happy enough because he would have stayed. He would have stayed on. Cool, cool, cool. Mm. Let's, so let's, okay, put yourself in Pep's shoes. Mm. You know that Sterling is doing exactly what you want. Yeah, it's different. And he's also producing. Because see, that's what for me. I used to get mad at Pep. I said, wait a minute. Let me just put myself in Pep's shoes now. Mm. How do you make Sane happy enough to stay? Because Sterling is doing what I want him to do. Yeah. And he's being very effective indeed. So, because see, the, the key thing is the first point. I have a philosophy. Which isn't my philosophy. Because I would always go for a Leroy Sane, and I would always um, ride with, with how Leroy Sane goes. No offense to Sterling, because Sterling is, is a top player, but yeah. I'm more of what Leroy Sane is about. But then if you're Pep, and you put yourself in Pep's shoes, you're like, this dude is doing what I'm doing. So it was almost as if like this was always going to happen, because you just had a situation where Sane and Sterling, they're fighting for the same position. Yeah. Because forget about the right side. Like, Leroy Sane is an inside forward. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... Well, okay, actually, no. Now I'm, I'm thinking about it. Look at how Leroy Sane plays. Yes, he can play as a winger. He can also play as an inside forward because he's but left footed. He hasn't played a lot as an inside forward. That's the thing. But you see, that's the thing that is that Maris is quality. He is, and I think I really love the way yeah. that, that, that that guy plays. And I always, and I've always said Maris might be technically the best African player in terms of just natural technical ability. But um, that could have been a thing about okay. You know, because Maris is, is in and out. You know, but as long as in and out, how about I put him in there? But you know, even the, beyond that, the it is tough competition. Yeah, the competition yeah. is very tough, and it's, and that's always a good thing. But if you're a Lorisane, yeah, you want competition to keep you on your heels and so forth, but you also want to play. And I think that you see, maybe you could have, maybe you're right in the sense of that was he even given enough opportunities? Because look at it. Remember that game against Liverpool. Um, last season, Etihad, that was a yeah. cold finish. He came that off the, the bench. And that was the off, finish that right? gave him the title. He came off the bench, right, didn't he? I think I think he did. Changed, I think yeah, he did. changed the game. That's what, look, and that's what Sane is capable of doing. He's, he's a devastating player on the wings. What? I have a question. I'm not sure, but didn't, wasn't um, Germany, Yoki Love, using Gnabry and Sane up top? In one game, if I'm not mistaken, he he might have. I mean, in the because I, remember, I watched in those Netherlands games, I believe they were both 
wide. And I can't, I think, did he have Max Cruiser? I mean, I'm sure someone in the comments. Well, I, 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 think Cruiser, Cruiser. As a striker. I don't think it was ben, Cruiser. I don't think so. But, in there, I'm sure. But what I'm saying though, Sane, as you said, he, he could be used as an inside forward. Who knows? Maybe he should have gotten more opportunities as an as a as a as a center forward for City off the bench. Who knows? Who knows? You know what I mean? And I think that's a position that we're struggling in right now. The the, the forward position. Look at look at G Jesus. Look at Gabriel Jesus. Like <laughs> since restart, this guy hasn't scored a thing. He hasn't done anything. So there's questions over him too. But before the restart. He was doing really be, before the, the the um the break. He was doing really well. So do you, do you know my thing about Jesus? That's what I said about because I I've been look looking at him all, all the way through. I don't think that Pep is a right manager for Jesus because in Jesus I see a potentially potentially really top striker. But I think because Pep has a very specific system and he wants his strikers to do very specific things, I don't think Jesus is allowed to really express himself. Yeah, so I true. think Jesus in a much more attacking team, offensive team, where he can dribble more, he can move yeah. more on the ball, he can move, move around a lot more. Because again, Jesus, he the guy has a lot of ability, which we just yeah. don't don't see. Exactly. You know, but 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 I think again, it's like so let so even very off right now, because you know, this is what I've said, and people have called me crazy. I believe that, and maybe we can, this can be a jump off for getting into a bit of Champions League talk. Mm -hmm. I think that City are are one of the strong favorites to win the Champions League, you know. And my thing is that you know that's good. that game against Real Madrid is going to be huge. That's going to be a huge game because Real Madrid are playing yeah. really really well. But yeah. I think that City have their eyes very very focused on the trophy. Mm -hmm. Now we can't ignore. We'll obviously talk about Bayern Munich. Love mm -hmm. to talk about Juventus and and so and Christian and both Sarah thing. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? I mean, what are your thoughts about that City Real Madrid game up to one two away goals? Do you think that is a very strong position that it makes it very hard for Real Madrid to now turn that around? Because Real Madrid are doing really well. I just yeah. don't see. Because I just think that City there is but, a real urgency to like we have to win it. Uh, Real already have one already, so. It's a tricky thing. It's a tricky thing because there's two cities. There's a city that could come out, come out there and, and blow Real Madrid away or even pick up a draw, win the tie. But there's also the city that could self-destruct, that could implode. You stole the word from my mouth, yeah. Yeah, that could implode and have us all in awe, have all of our jaws dropped, be like, God, it happened again. You know? But... What they did, what they did at the Bernabeu was just simply amazing. To get two goals there and defeat them, not even a draw, but to defeat them. It makes you believe, but it's a long road ahead. The Champions League, the former changing, it's a long road ahead. So the first thing we need to do is get past Real Madrid, who are in very good form. I was going to mention that, but you did. They're in very good form. They, they, they have leapfrog Barcelona four points ahead of them right now. I don't watch a lot of La Liga, but I, I, I keep my ears open. I keep my ears open, and I don't watch La Liga because I don't have the subscription. I don't have BN Sports that covers it. I could find other ways, but most times there's a Premier League match showing at the same time. So mm -hmm. the Premier League no, no, is, it, it, it's hard to yeah. schedule the stuff. Exactly. That's my bread and butter. No, 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 it's, it's, no, no. Real Madrid is like, look, I mean, they are doing well and they are playing well, but you know, I've always said that I never understood them letting go of, of Chris Cristiano. That didn't make any sense. Now, the thing about that, though, is that them letting go of Cristiano helped to show us that, oh, this Benzema is actually pretty good, <laughs> you know, because when Cristiano was there, Benzema was just there to facilitate. Cristiano. So he was just there as like a fall and a decoy. He, he played that role really well, but you were a decoy for the main goal scorer, Cristiano. But now that Cristiano has now gone, Benzema is like, oh, this guy can drop deep. He can create. He's good in the ball. He can play make and he can score as well. And he can be the top scorer. So we're seeing a guy who is so multi talented, but we never saw all these talents when he was given a specific, much more restricted role for thinking. Hence why guys are now saying that, well, if Real Madrid 
win La La Liga, and let's just say they go far in the Champions League, can this guy be a Ballon d'Or candidate? Because see, for me, my thing is, is that you can't be a Ballon d'Or candidate yeah. without doing really well in the Champions League. You yeah, can't. Yeah, that's, it's that's impossible. So, so, to interject a bit, right? Um, Benzema is very, very underrated, and he has just emerged from the shadows of Cristiano Ronaldo, which every player wants to do, wants to come out of the shadow of another big player and you know, you got to be happy for him. But he is kind of facing the whole, I just saw something, the sex scandal thing. He has to take the stand or something for that. I don't know if you saw that. I mm. think it's the whole situation with him and Valbuena that happened a long time ago. Oh, we, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Him, um, outcasted from the French national team. The man could have been a World Cup winner, but all, you know, decisions in the past, you know. But since we're on the topic, of we, we're champions. I don't want to jump around too much. I want to finish off what I have written down here too. We have, we're talking about Champions League. I think City could get past Real Madrid, but we have to just keep our focus, concentrations, levels really, you know, up there and get past Real Madrid. My question for you, do you think Chelsea could get, you know, overturn a 3-0 deficit though? You see, I'm always hopeful. <laughs> You know, you always have to be hopeful and sort of. And for me, mm. I've you see, first of all, my initial thing is that I'm doubtful, but this is the Champions League. I remember, I think this was what's it called? This was 04, the 03 04 Champions League. Um, I think AC Milan beat Deportivo La, La Coronia, I think it was 5 1 or sort mm -hmm. of, and then Deportivo then beat them 4 0. <laughs> um, in the reverse, you know, we've basically we've seen crazy things happen. Liverpool scored three goals in the second half of a flipping final. Yeah, that was so amazing. I mean, if you're going via statistics and face value and logic, you would say no because it's Bayern Munich. They're playing really, really well. They're looking, looking really, 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 really good, and they feel that. And Anoia even came out and said, "No, no, no, we can do something mm. this season. We can do something this season." And I think, see. So let me just first do with the whole Chelsea ban thing. Who scores the first goal will, 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 will be key. If Ban scored the first goal, it's a wrap. It's over. Like, psychologically, it's over. If Chelsea scored the first goal, and if Chelsea score early, psychologically, it's like, okay, let's not... Because again, it does not mean definitely that we'll turn it around, but it is imperative Chelsea scored the first goal. Because if they score the first goal, then it's like you're now putting seeds of doubts in there. Mm -hmm. Then the key is about can you get that second goal? Because if you get the first goal and you can now somehow quickly get the second goal, the tie has changed. The, the well, tie has yeah, changed. That is, that is definitely true. So for Chelsea, they would have to approach it very, you know, um, carefully because their defense is kind of looking really bad right now. Mm. And it's kind of weird though, because you know, you show up against City and then against West Ham, you, you underwhelm. It's like it's a weird thing. Oh, no, no, no. You see, you see, I'll tell you a football thing. It's not weird. It makes mm. sense. And this yeah. is this like this is a kind of like football adage is how do you play against a team that gives you space? How mm. do you play against a team that sits deep? And you must have a tactic of playing against those two teams. Against any pep team, mm -hmm. any pep team, even Man Man City, they will always give you space. No pep team will ever sit back deep. They will always yeah. come to attack you. They will always come to be the aggressor because they will always pump as many men forward in the opposing half as possible. And they will be very happy to be light at the back. So Pep doesn't want aggressive defenders. He wants intelligent defenders that can read the game because he just wants defenders who can intercept because of the high line. Mm -hmm. But, so Chelsea will do well against those teams because Chelsea really know how to move the ball quickly and move the ball swiftly through their guys. Um, but against a deep block, you need a whole different tactic. And you need guys who can now, who are pass specialists, can find a pass that nobody can. And you also need dribblers. Yeah. You need people who can take those guys out of position. So you need a lot more imagination because it's now much more of a creative game. And what I always say to guys is that the biggest misconception is a team that has like 70, 80% possession. That doesn't mean, mean that's your control yeah, yeah. game. Look, I did. I did mention that in a, in a preview or something recently. I'm like, we always all possess the other team, but always, you know, they, 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 you know, eight times this season, they beat us. And it's because of those, you know, those special passes, a mistake here and there. 
us playing high up the field, somebody running in behind, Mendy doing something dumb, or Stones, or Otamendi, or one of them, Edison running out. So there's always this margin of error, you know what I mean, that with, with City. And that's how I think Chelsea punished us, because we were a better team. I, 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 we were a better team, but that Mendy mistake, and then mm. that Fernandino um, handball, which, you know, and then there was a clearance off the line. There was a... a but we were peppering Chelsea on the other side, but we just weren't scoring. Well, no, no, no. Again, it's like those moments. Yeah. If Sterling scores from that counter, exactly. it's a different game. When he hit the post. Yeah, different. when he hit the post. If he scores from that counter, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a different game. But again, it goes back to um, having key defenders and having those key defenders who can, who can who ensure that they don't make those key mistakes. But even if I thought that City would win the game... I thought that Chelsea always had a chance because this Chelsea team under Lampard, yeah. if you give them space, they can look good because yeah. they know how to move the the the, the ball well, and they've yeah. got guys like a Willian and the and the Pulisic who can be very dangerous on the counter attack. So a team who knows how to play well on the counter attack will always give a Pep team issues and problems. Oh. So, but then on the in the, in the um, adverse against West Ham, they now sit deep. You can't yeah. play the same way as they played. Yeah, yeah. Because you see, again, you see, against Man City, City will have much more of the possession. So Chelsea are like, all right, we're now counter-punching you. But yeah. now when Chelsea now have the possession, they're like, oh, what do we do? See, City against the West Ham, more likely than not, they will beat them because City know how to use the ball well in high position because City have got cleverer, better pass specialists. Chelsea do not have a single pass specialist in their entire team, which is yeah. crazy. What? What about Jorginho though? You know, but he wasn't playing though. He no, no, no. Been... You see, for me, jo jo Jorginho, I wouldn't call. I would call him. He's like Tony Cruz. He's a good passer. You see, a pass specialist is David Silva. De Bruyne. De, see, David Silva, De Bruyne are pass specialists. So in that yeah. final third, they can produce a through ball that can lead to a chance. That's not necessarily what a Jorginho would do or what a Jabi Alonso back in the day would do. Like they can do it, but they're not. Playmakers. Yeah, on a Play constant basis, they don't do it enough. Yeah. Do it enough. So um question uh, while we are Chelsea Champions League, you think they're hopeful of um they, you know they, they could they could they could because you get two goals early, it's a whole different ball game. But the way Bayern are right now, it's gonna be that difficult. And for me, I'm gonna say Chelsea are out of the Champions League. But you guys still have the FA Cup to look forward to, and um you play United. Which you know, you guys, you guys are capable of beating United, but they are also looking very good. The effort, and you still have to meet City or Arsenal in the final. So that's you know, Chelsea season could still be successful. But I will, I want to stay on the Champions League a little bit more um, before we um, we move on to the next topic. I want I want to run down really fast, really fast, like how you think the the eight ties, round of sixteen ties, are gonna end up. We know the Atleti Liverpool is this has been decided. Atleti, you have to give them praises. They they, they play Liverpool off the park twice. Quality, twice. quality. Yeah, master plan. You, have, master yeah, plan. you, you, you got to give them praises, and they did that without their hundred million euro signing, Jao Felix. So you you, you kind of question: Did they even need to spend that money that way? You know what I'm saying? But oh, no, no, no. But see, the thing with Jao Felix, I always said that. See, Jao Felix. I'm not going to be too harsh on him because I think, and I think people have realized that he's in the wrong team. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Wrong. And and also, you could even see that what's it called, Marcos Llorente mm -hmm. has really been the revelation of Atletico Madrid yeah. because he scored two goals there, and he's been much more of the mainstay for Atletico, which is why. I mean, we'll talk about it. Atletico yeah, yeah. Madrid team, you have to watch. About yeah, you have to watch. You have to watch that team this season. So that's definitely a team to watch, though. So Liverpool, the defending champions. You know, they always make miss. Um, excuses about the focusing on the Champions League. They were focused on beating Atleti. They failed to do so. Because Atleti, just the better team. You, you think about it. What if Atleti was in the Premier League? They, you know what I'm saying? You know, you, you just think about that. But maybe across a, a long season, it might be a different story. So let me not jump around with that. You know what I mean? But RB Leipzig, they smashed Spurs, you know? So they are true to the last eight as well. But then, but then Leipzig... So, no team of Venom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That is true. Have you heard? I don't know if you heard. Leipzig have just signed the Korean 
Maestro, Wonder Kid, you want to, whatever you want to call him, Huang He Chan. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just, wait, I wait, just wait, saw wait. that. So is he? Wait, what position do, do, does he play? I think he he could play as a striker. Uh, he could play as a, a right winger. He was the man who scored a wonder goal against Liverpool when Salzburg was at Anfield, and I think oh, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. I mean, I, the, I mean, because they definitely need a replacement for Timo Werner, yeah. which is why it is so unfortunate for Leipzig that they will be without him. Because I think with Timo Werner. Leipzig would be another team who you, you, you'd have to watch. And yeah, yeah. for me, I almost... You see, I don't even know what to think about this. I don't know whether I would want Atletico and Leipzig to face each other mm -hmm. so that, you know... One of, see, I don't, yeah, so it's one of those things of like, if you have Atlanta or Atalanta or Leipzig facing each other, yeah. that means you have a totally new team who will be in the first time in the CL semi. Right, but yeah. if they now have to face different teams, it now makes yeah. it much more complex. But for me, Atalanta is a very very dangerous team. Yeah. We, we, will, we, will really dangerous to, we will get to Atalanta just yeah, in a yeah. bit. But um, what you call it? Um, Chelsea signed Timo Werner. They can't use him. Leipzig without him. You know, I know you probably probably saw this. It would have cost a Leipzig a further five mil to keep Timo Werner at the club until the end of the um, Champions League season. So it's a no-brainer. You let him go. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of money. Five mil to keep him there until that, that tie. And who I, knows? I mean, if if it's me, again, I don't know what their finances are. I don't know what, what, what the books are. So that's really them. But for me, I would argue long and hard to be like, we, we, we could do something here. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That yeah, is true. Remember, these are now one-off games. Yeah, one-off games. Is, so we, if with Timo Werner, who knows? We could go really far. Yeah. So but the, that five mil could have been worth it if we get maybe to a final or maybe do something crazy. That because is anything true. can happen in football. That is true. They could have made that five million quadruple. They could have won the thing. But the thing is, with Leipzig, it's a tricky team because now they have pushed Danny Olmo further up the field, playing as a striker as well, alongside um Nkunku. And Konko could play as a striker. He was a striker at PSG. Mm -hmm. And he has been creating a lot. He has been, you know, and they're still looking to, to, to you know, lengthen the deal with for Patrick Trick, still trying to get him on a permanent, which I don't think would happen now they have signed Huang Yi Chan. But they have to try to extend that loan deal a little bit further so they could have, you know, Schick for the, 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 the quarterfinal where you could meet a team who, who's a bit rusty. What if they meet PSG? And PSG haven't been playing any football. Yeah. They, they could actually have the better day and, you know, win the tie. So Leipzig, very good team, man. Very, very good team. Angelino moved from City. He's playing well over there. They have a solid backline in, you know, Upamecano, Mikuli, Canote. They have Auburn. It's like it, it, it's, they have Halstenberg and um, Klosterman. The team is so good. The team is, you know what I mean? That's what I like. I like stuff like this. You know, they're still... The, the, the Swede the, um what's his name Emil Forsberg the Emil team yeah. the team oh, no, 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 no. you have to give credit to Anglesman like for yeah. a guy that young to do so well with this team I think is is simply incredible and like they've had an amazing season which is why I'm excited to see what he can do because again like um Swissy this is my Nigerian striker Victor Osimen yeah. Who plays Lille and he's about to be on his way to Napoli. And the guy says, Okay, where should he go? Where should he go? And the guy on my stream said, You know, he should go to Leipzig. I was like, That would be yeah. a because remember, yeah. they've sold him over, and that would be a very good signing. Because again, it's like, What is good is if you're a young player and you've got a young manager, mm -hmm. I think that is a really good thing to have. Yeah, yeah. because young managers, I just think, have a better management and they can, they can have a better rap, rapport. With yeah. the players and also Bundesliga is so good for young players as well to go through. Definitely. But um, so if Victor Osimhen is gonna move to Napoli, it definitely means Milik is out of the door. I've been seeing a lot of rumors on Milik. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Basically, I think they're saying that they're thinking of Milik move, moving on. So that's yeah, why they want and also there's like yeah. if you're gonna because got apparently the reports I've read is that they are willing to pay like 60 or 70, so they really want him. And Gatuso yeah. said, I was reading that Gatuso said that. The only player I want this summer is mm -hmm. Osimhen. That's it. Yeah, I yeah. want no one. He's the he's only player. player. So if he's you if you want him that that's much, 
it must mean that okay, I want him as a starting striker. I've watched him, I've seen him, we've we've studied him, we've scouted him. This is the guy that we need for to, to take her to the next to the next level. You know, you know who must be really happy right now, the folks over at Lille, man. They sold Nicola Pepe for 70, 72. Oh wow. Pounds, you know, and Victor Osiman now. So those guys are they, making cheddar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, the thing, you know, Dominic does I see as good as that that is though. And this is what I've always talked about is that I feel that fo the football world would be so much better if we had better parity. Imagine if Dortmund kept hold of Lewandowski, Goza, Kagawa. Imagine if Monaco kept hold of Mbappe, Benoit de Silva, Fabinho, and, and sort of. Imagine if all, this, all these guys still kept their players. It would make things far more com competitive. Like Monaco, with a very young team, got to the semi-final of the Champions League. One league on that season as well, yeah. You know, and the thing is, what if a uh, fit Marco Royce in that Dortmund team all throughout the season we would be insane? No, 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 but, you, see, you see what I've always said. This what I've always said this if Klopp had stayed at Dortmund and didn't lose their players, guaranteed they win a Champions League. Guaranteed, and they, they almost did, they almost yeah. did, yeah. You know, and um, what was I gonna say? Um, look at Bayern eight years in a row, like how ridiculous is that? <laughs> no, 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 but, but, but see, 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 this is, this is see, I mean, <laughs> this is the issue with club football. Yeah. And which is why I always say, like, you know, international football, it will always be slightly much more special than club football because club football, people want to de deny it, but let's keep, let's, let's be real now. Juventus are, Juventus are about to win a nine in a row. Like, that shirt you're wearing, yeah. that's that club, that badge, they're about to go for nine in a row. Bayern Munich just won eight in a row. And who did Bayern Munich buy this summer? Yes, they bought that guy called Leroy Sane. So do you really think that's oh, any team? And also, did they just bought Leroy Sane? Lucien Favre who is still manager of, of Dortmund and Leipzig just sold Werner. So who do you think will win the Bundesliga next season? Pierre Schwartz, so we, we are no. having a monopoly in club football right now. It's like, it's just the same, same, same. So the only excitement you can have is when the Champions League comes, comes through because Champions League is like anybody can win. Exactly. Which is why what Real Madrid did with three in a row was insane, which will never happen again. That will never happen again. They did, they did three in a row and four in five, right? Four in five. Four yeah, in five. So, so we spoke about Atleti, Liverpool, Leipzig, Spurs. We didn't even talk much about Spurs because they have been, oh, man. You see, you see the thing, you know? thing about Tottenham is, first of all, I this, and this is what I always say, like, the hiring of Mourinho was a bad hire because if you go with Pochettino, and the sack Pochettino, you've got to go radically in a different direction. So yeah. whether you want to bring in a Ten Hag, whether you want to bring in a Nagelsmann, whether you want to bring in a Ronald Koeman, you have to now bring in a coach and play a different brand of football that is not pragmatic, but more expansive and maybe with much more of an offensive philosophy. But Mourinho is not the same, but Mourinho is similar in approach to Pochettino. They are, they are, they are similar. So, and for me, Mourinho is a manager where give him PSG, they win the Champions League. Tuchel can't win the Champions League with, with PSG. It's kind of, it's kind of, he, he doesn't have the managerial school to win it with him. If but, you, but, but, we shall see. We shall see. Dominic, I will take, <laughs> I will take a bet with you. I will take a bet with you. So we, we, can, we, we, we can bet a virtual money or, or sort of string this yeah, whole thing. We can bet a virtual money. I will yeah. bet with you that Tuchel will not win a Champions League with PSG. Neymar or no Neymar, Tuchel will not win a Champions League with PSG. They're not, I'm not going to put PSG up there to win it because my team is still in it. And Atleti, they're looking good. They're, they're looking very good. Bayern Munich, they're looking good. But Spurs, they have looked really inept. Mm. Injuries have really ravaged their season. And, you know, they're struggling to get top top six right about now. They struck right now, they're ninth. They're struggling to get top eight right now. Oh, okay, so, so let, let, let me ask you this. If you're Harry Kane... Mm. Do you push to leave, seeing what's maybe happening? Do you, do you push to leave, or do you still stay? Because remember, mm. I've always said, and I don't know, it's just something, a playing like FIFA and everything, and Harry Kane moves to Man United, and I'm like, it's just the, I, I don't know I'm a City fan, but it's just the ideal move for an Englishman to move to the the the, 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 the the club that dominated the Premier League era. That's the ultimate move for Harry Kane. I don't know why he's still at Tottenham Hotspur, to be honest. Could become a club legend there, I know. 
but you're not winning nothing. No, no, no. But see, that's a small mentality. Like, if his mentality is, I just want to just score loads of... And I think he may have alluded to this. I think during the whole lockdown thing, he was having an, an interview with, I think, Jamie Redner, where he did allude to the fact of where he isn't just happy scoring goals and sort of he wants to win trophies. Yeah. And you will only be res respected in this game if your goals lead to trophies. And any self-respecting professional football player Yes, goal records are cool, but what you really want is I can go home, look at the mantelpiece and be like, aha, that's my Premier League crown, that's my FA Cup crown, that's my thingy crown, and look at those 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 things. Those the the goal scoring crown doesn't glisten as brightly as the Premier League crown, the Chelsea crown, maybe the Euro crown. Those that's what defines you as a professional player. And Harry Kane can't do that. He can't do that. He have individual awards, but he doesn't have anything with Tottenham. So, and he won't. And look, he could have. He could have last season. They were in the Champions League final, and I know a lot of us argue that should he have played? Should he, he have, have, have well, played? He no should. way. Wait, didn't didn't Pochettino drop Lucas Moura, who scored? <laughs> who scored a hat trick in the semi final? <laughs> Please, Please, Dominic, please, because I told you, like, this is something that I will hold over Pochettino forever. So you play a semi, a player scores what, in my opinion, see, I say the best hat trick ever scored in terms of quality was Rivaldo's hat trick against Valencia. That's the best quality hat trick. The greatest hat trick of all time is Lucas Moura's hat trick, which is just insane. How does a player who scored the hat trick in a semi that gets you to, to the final? How do you then drop him for the final? It is one of the most mind-boggling things ever. And the guy that, that you play is a player who was injured for five months. See, this is the thing here. First game back. If, right? What? First game back. Yes, he, it was his first game back. So, you see, that is where you have delusions of grandeur and delusions of who Harry Kane is. See, if that was a... If that was like a, a Cristiano or a... Messi or some of that ilk, if yeah. they were injured, I would still play them because I know what they can do. Exactly. And I know that and I know what they, they, they've done in these Champions League finals. And I know what, what, what they can do if you put it. So I will say, you know what? It is worth the risk because I know what they're capable of. Harry Kane has not done anything even close, close to what Messi and Cristiano have done in the Champions League. So it is insane. And also, many Tottenham fans will tell you. They will tell you, and this is like a little hidden secret that sometimes Tottenham actually do play better without Harry Kane. Because mm. the issue that Tottenham have is that because Harry Kane is the emblem of England, England's captain, the emblem of Tottenham, managers feel like they have to play him. But what the reason is that, you know what? When they had Eriksen, Lucas Moura, Dele Alli, they play faster, they play quicker, they have more movement. But with Harry Kane, there's less movement, and Harry Kane is much easier to defend than guys who can run behind you with speed. So that's true, that is true, that is true. So that's it for Spurs. They are out of the Champions League. So Atalanta, they they, they totally dismantled and utterly destroyed Valencia, the Murcia Lagos. Deconstruction, total deconstruction, bro. So I've actually made a few videos just praising Atalanta. I like their style of play. They made that's great, man. Which is um their deal. They made Pashalic from Chelsea permanent. They made Duvan Zapata permanent. They 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 brought in guys like Ilicic, who has totally revolutionized his game at the age of 32. And they have Papu Gomez there playing well. They have a whole bunch of little known defenders there just doing some big things, overlapping as well going forward. The, the team, the team just looks really, really damn good. You know what I'm saying? And they could do something. Believe you know, me. See, the thing about why Atlanta are dangerous is you will always underestimate them. Mm. And that will be to their advantage. And the thing with Atlanta is these, we see, they have scored, they've, I think they've, they've scored 77 goals this season. So they've scored the most goals in the see, major yeah. European leagues. Yeah. So a team, and notice why they're yeah. so dangerous to, to face because no matter how much you, you try, if you're a Bayern, you're a Man City, you're a Juventus, you will underestimate them. Listen, because, well, I know how good they are, but naturally you just will. And once you do that, 
they have a clear ad ad advantage. And the team who can score so freely in a one-off game yes. is dangerous. Look, because look now you don't even have a second line to try to rectify that. It is this. It, it's, it's this. It's, it's just this now. Look at what they did against us in the draw, second leg draw over in Italy. Look at what they did in the group. They were mm. they were they were out of the group basically. The last three games they came back, smashed Shakhtar, smashed who else was in our group? It was um, it was was it Shakhtar the next? No, no. Yeah, it was Shakhtar and Dinamo Zagreb. Dinamo Zagreb. Yeah. Destroyed them. And they made it through. And now they're in the quarters. So I'm really, really proud of what Gasparini has done here, what he has built. And yeah, what no, no, no. Because again, it's like, because I, cause, because I used to watch Syria, I, Gasparini has been around. And, yeah, and so, so it's just so crazy that's how he's just been able to find this kind of spark with this group of players. Because again, none of these I mean, apart from Zapata, who I've sort of known as being like a, I will never watch Coke Cup Americas. None of the guys are sort of that well known. Ilicic was just sort of, yeah, he can run. So he's been able just to see that is amazing manners, but you're maximizing yeah. these dudes and you're creating chemistry. Because you know what I always say? 10 individual amazing players will probably lose to a great team. Sure. Because more likely than not, a great team will probably beat 10 individuals. Those 10 individuals may be supremely amazing, but you're individuals. Yeah. But and in the, in, 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 Within the um, paradigm of a football match, a really good functioning team with great chemistry will beat just a bunch of individuals thrown to together. So, very true, and that's what's going on with Atalanta right now, man. They, they they've been in really good form. Valencia, I think I wasn't even expecting them to come through to the, the round of sixteen. They had managerial problems and all. Yeah. They brought in the young guy, um, Saladis, and they have just been all over the place. And and, and, and then he's he's been sacked. I oh, he got sacked? I, th I think I think he got sacked. I think I think the ladders got, got sacked. Yeah. Oh, shoot, I didn't see anything on that. But with the whole Rodrigo thing, they, them thinking about if to keep him or if to sell him because the club, you know, finances and all of that. So it's it's no surprise that they they, they were out. So we we're done with that one. Do you think Leon Leon could defeat Juventus? They have a one nil lead, right? Yeah. Do so here's the no no basically here's the the the, the thing here. If Juventus don't come through, Sarri will, will, will be sacked. That's I think it will be. Yeah, Syria, no Syria will be sacked. Now, my thing about it is um, I, Juventus, I believe Juve will come through. But, now listen, this is a, a big but. Mm. If this was done before this whole COVID thing hit, or oh, yeah. Juve for sure that have turned around. Memphis Depay. He's fit again. You see, Memphis do the pie, and we'll probably got to talk talk about the Euros afterwards. But Memphis the pie make things a little bit more exciting. I still feel Juventus will get the job done because them at the crib, they'll be able to come through. Yeah. But it's just that, because look, this is a Juve team that still aren't fully functioning well. They're not really fully firing on all cylinders. But also, as well, keep in mind. The French league, which I call the 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 the, the oh, Uber Eats, oh, Uber Eats, Uber Eats, yeah, 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 the Uber Eats, they've declared the league. Yeah, basically. so Juventus will be more match fit than that is, Lyon, which is also is, a disadvantage to PSG as well. Mm, but that is true. But could Lyon be at an advantage with more time to prepare and no play? It, 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 look, 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 we don't know. It's a one-off game. Remember, they have Hassan Awa. Very well, yeah. player. They have. I don't know if Lucas Toussaint will be available because he has moved to um Hertha Berlin, their record signing. Mm. And I don't know if they extended the deal a little longer so he could stay on at Lyon. I don't know. But Awa would be a player to watch for sure. Um goalkeeper Anthony Lopez, definitely. If he does not make one of those errors he made last year against yeah. like Benfica or did, was it this year against Benfica? This Champions League, when they, they all, yeah, I can't remember. I think it's this season. They all, it almost came back to bite them too, you know. So he would be big. He would be big, and you know, um, Memphis, Memphis. If guys like um, what's his name, the, the Ivorian there, I, I forgot his name. Right, Maxim. Um, what's his name, boy? Um, Maxwell Cornet. Cornet. Yeah. 
Yeah, Maxwell. If if these guys come good, because I could remember when Leon beat City in in the group, and this team could shock this. And plus, they have the one nil advantage. Guys, right, look, look. We, we don't know what's going to happen here. No, it's, see, see, now that's that's the the, the the key thing. There is that, which is why, see, in a, in a one off game, you would always go with Juventus. But because this is now a second leg, Leon now have the power of their way goal. So for Leon, they're like, you know what? Because two one, a two one loss, they go through. Yeah, exactly. So Leon just said, let's just get a goal. Exactly. If we get a goal, then I have to score three. So any goal, we see any goal because they didn't score an away goal. Any goal we we score puts the pressure on Juventus to really try and get those goals. And and the more they have to force and get the goal, gives us space for counter attack. So. I have a, I have a feeling. I have a feeling. I just have a sneaky feeling. Leon is gonna make it through, though. You know what I mean? Nah, that would be that would be such a disaster. If it, yeah. look, you could have, but for me, I just don't see it happening because it would be such a disaster. And I think Juventus, mm. as disjointed as they have been, I think they know that okay, we have to be focused here. And we've got to make this happen because see, for me, I, I just think I look Leon. They're good, but I just don't. I like remember they were playing at home, so now they now have to play away from home. Yeah, they yeah. don't. They're not really a match fit. And Juventus, I believe, there is more pressure on them than Leon, and I think that pressure will give them that extra oomph that to see them through. But the thing is, the thing is, we have seen teams come back from restart and just played like if they weren't, you know, there was never a break. True. So, true. So. And plus, there's no home fans, so the home advantage goes out the window. True. So, it's like Leon could show up on the day, and all as as you said, all they need to score is one, and lose, and 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 allow two, and that's it. But the thing that you think, see, what I say is that look, I still feel like you have two advantages when you when you play at home. You have the fan advantage, but you also have the pitch advantage because there's a thing known as pitch familiarity, is that. A pitch you've played on, you play on like four times a season, your brain gets used to it. And it's a sign, it's a kind of sub subconscious thing that, that you have towards the words like a guy where, oh, I've, I've only played on this pitch like maybe once a year, twice a year. They don't have that kind of familiarity that, that you have. So that that's on another little small advantage you can have. So that is definitely true. But I, I'm 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 a, I'm gonna keep it interesting and fun and, and say Leon, hold on to this though. <laughs> We, we just have two more to run through real quick. Napoli yeah. won, Barcelona won. Do you think that the Barcelona, do, you, do you think it's written that Setien is going to screw everything up? Like I, I said when he got hired that he wasn't the right man for the job in the first place. Wasn't the right man, a, lot nope. people, a lot of people said, oh, well, you don't know anything. You don't know. No. I'm like, I'm only a guy giving an opinion. I don't need to be an expert at anything. I don't need and, to. And, and who is right now? I'm, I'm, who's, looking, who's looking good right now? Me. You know what I'm saying? So they're gonna they're not winning La Liga. They, they could forget about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's 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 it's, 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 it's looking sketchy. It's looking sketchy yeah. now. It's looking sketchy. Since there's no El Clasico left, they they're not winning La Liga. You know what I'm saying? They have to now focus on the Champions League. One one against Napoli. It's gonna be difficult for Napoli. It's gonna be an uphill. But if 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 Koulibaly is still at the club, and it's a tricky thing too. Will Napoli have all their players there? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, I mean, basically, for me, it's like, look, if you asked me this, like, two weeks ago, I would have said Barcelona. But then I saw them against Sevilla. Mm -hmm. I saw them against um, Bill, Bill, Bill Bilbao. And this team looks lost. They don't look good. No, they look I really lost. And I, and, and, I, and I look at how Napoli, how Gattuso tactically prepared for Napoli against Juventus. In the Coppa Italia final, Which and I look at, um, I think it's Fabian Ruiz. Yeah, he has been good. He has been. On yeah, fire. I mean, I look at him and I say that if Gattuso gets it right tactically, he can. I think they can beat Barcelona at the Camp Nou. You know, or they could just, or, or they could do, do like a ward and a good penalty. But I still not. If he gets it right, I think they've defensively he can non nullify them. And yeah. specifically, if you could just get the ball to Insigne and Ruiz and Manchester in key attacking areas, those guys can do some serious damage. I was about to mention, I don't know, somewhere we, we, we sort of aligned 
I yeah. realize like some of the words you say I'm about to say it, some of the words I'm saying you was, <laughs> was about to say it. But look, this guy in senior is a player that I fear so much. Hmm. I remember when City played Napoli, this guy, oh man, he's so good and he is so underrated. Imagine if he played for Juventus or maybe he moved to a bigger, like let's say a bigger club. I'm not saying Napoli is a small club. I'm just saying, let's say he moved to a, uh, let's say, a club where he's going to fit the system, a big club, and he does well. It would be, it would look so, it's just fantasy. And I'm saying, I don't think he's going to move anywhere. He's like 29, 30 by now. You know, 29, I think, the last time I checked. But that guy is one of my favorite players, man. One of my favorite players. And No, 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 because, because you know, um, in senior, in the way that he, he plays, yeah, he's, he's 29, in the way that he plays, he reminds me of like Robin, where I have a specific thing that I do. And a pattern of how I play, but even if you know what I'm going to do, I'm still going to go ahead and 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 do it. Yeah. So you know what you're going to get from him, and there is an ammo and a pattern to play that he always goes to. But he does it very well in what he does, and I think he has been so crucial to Napoli, especially coming off the left, coming in on his right, and the amount of times that he will come on to his right and score those goals and do it the right, amazing. So I've always I've always admired him as a player senior. So, do you think Barcelona? Who you have Barcelona and Napoli right now? I am going to still. I say Barcelona come through this, but they don't win the champs. I think but Barcelona gets taken out either in the quarters or in the semis. Not now, not by now. It's Napoli. I mean, Napoli will run them close. Barcelona will. I think Messi will just about get them through, but it's Messi hard, alone won't yeah. take them all the way. It's hard to write off Barcelona right now, so early in the round of six. It's really hard. Now, nah, I mean, see, yeah. that's being disrespectful. I say, despite of all the bad things that are happening, it is still being disrespectful saying that they'll, they'll lose to Napoli. See, as long as they have Messi, I yeah. think Messi will find a way to do just enough to beat them. But if they come up against a Bayern Munich, a Man City, yeah. they can't beat them. I don't think they, they can beat them. Question, since we are in Barcelona, reports are circulating that Messi don't want to stall in negotiations for contract extension beyond 2021 do you think he would leave at 34 like think about it, 34 he's 33 now do you think he will leave barcelona at 34 to move to another big european club you see dominic say this is the golden question because it's not this is where i began messi will never leave barcelona yeah I, mean, and I always had the idea that he will retire here he went through the youth system here the club paid for his bills when he was going through like some medical issues and everything. So he feels he owes the club. And Messi, because again, I look at Messi on Instagram, I look at his stuff, and he strikes me. This is me using my sixth sense. He strikes me as someone who doesn't want to shake the boat, likes living within his comfort zone, strong yeah. family man. So if I just connect the dots, it's like my family is used to being here, they're happy being here, family being here. Why do I want to change and everything? And the, other thing, so, the other thing too, Messi, Messi doesn't even speak English. He doesn't even try. I don't yeah. think he speaks any other language. Maybe he would understand Italian. See, but <laughs> they and that is a key thing. They see, like I think, remember, Cristiano, he moved to England, but as well as speaking English and and sort of and also. I think when you're in, in Portugal, you learn Spanish. So Portuguese and Spanish are two things that, that, you, that, you, that you, you both learn. So yeah. then it wasn't so much. But then Italy, he's obviously doing Italian. So I think there are guys who are very happy to go ahead, go to different countries and learn. Again, I, 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 Ibrahimovic was like a guy selling himself. Yeah, exactly. to, Ibrahimovic has played for every single thing. Blah, 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 exactly. So my thing is, um, which is why just... To be interesting, let's say Barcelona go trophyless, mm -hmm. things get really bad. Does Messi still stay? Because my thing was always that Messi either retires at Barcelona or in his very last year, he spends his last year at Newell's Old Boys in Argentina, yeah. where he began. Yeah. But, but you don't know because again, it was funny. But but do you see Messi ever joining an English Premier League club? He's been linked to City a lot, and that is why I said that. You see, Neymar was the biggest story of the last decade to PSG. Yeah. The biggest story this decade is if Messi was to go to Man City, if Pep 
picked up the phone and said, yo, Messi, I, I don't know what's happening in Barcelona. Come. You got two, three, four years left. That's the whole thing. We know each other. I know you. David Silva, he's coming out of his foot and he's young. Come in. I'll make this your team. We will play how, how, how you play. We can win everything here. Because yeah. you, you have the, the money, you have the support, and you know that I know far more what I'm doing than what setting of our Val Valverde did. Exactly. Exactly. So for Messi to be like, you know what? Because I think, see, Messi wants one more Champions League before he retires. He really wants one more. And I don't think he can get that at Barcelona. I think Barcelona, I think it's, it's done. I don't, I don't see them winning another Champions League for another four or five years. Too many teams are far are too far ahead of them and they're being run really poorly. But in Man City, based on their player acquisition, the scouts they have, and for Pep Guardiola, that is a far more fertile environment and it's a far better environment for him to go to, to yeah. win something. And because of the whole Pep link, because again, Messi doesn't want to go to a totally foreign yeah. situation. So let's say, oh, what about Messi to Juventus to Liverpool? Okay, Messi, does he know Sarri? Does he know Klopp? He knows Pep. So, yeah. The other thing too is who could actually afford these ridiculous wages, you know what I mean? And, you know, City, they banked rule by the, um, the Emirates and it's like, they could afford it. They could mm -hmm. afford it. And, yeah. and, and we're not going to get into the whole politics of things, but we know what goes down we knows how we know how deep we know these pockets are deeper than an abyss yes you know what i'm saying and the same the same could happen with the whole newcastle situation as well where a whole country is bankrolling a club you bro know? don't yeah, don't, ask, don't, tell. don't ask don't ask <laughs> don't tell i mean we we all know wink wink where the money comes sorry it's, it's, it's like it's like my, my, my main man bram abramovich we know where the money comes from, but look, exactly. it is what it is. Let's let's yeah. let's write. You know, look, and people people like to bash City and say they buy this, they buy every team, or every team buy the league. People might say Leicester didn't. You do it wasn't it a billionaire that owned Leicester? Why they look, came to prominence? No, 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 no. You see, see club for it was a great season. Don't get me wrong, it was a great season. But how were you? How were they able to bankroll? Club football has changed. Club football, it's about money. That's what it is. So anybody say no, 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 no. Everyone does it. Okay. It club football isn't fair. It isn't proper. It isn't. It isn't parity. It's about dog eats dog, cutthroats. It is what it is. Just, just to make a, a quick point to some people who may have doubts, I recently saw in Portugal the Portuguese league, the, a club named Famalicão. This club was second, third. I'm like, what is going on? When I did some research, the club got taken over, financially taken over by a, a company that runs another La Liga club or something like that. So they had players from that club going to Family Cow to make the team better, pumping money into the club. So it's all about money. It's all about money. What Leicester did was an anomaly, but still they were backed by that that Thai, that in the Thai, Thailand, right? He's yeah, 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 Thai, yeah. Billionaire. You know, the guy who, you know, rest his soul died in yeah. the helicopter. Yeah, yeah, in the helicopter thing, yeah. But they have a big money backer behind them. It's the same like Inter, AC Milan. All these teams, Juventus, have the whole the whole Jeep, the Fiat Jeep thing behind them. PSG, we, we know what's going on. Yeah. You know no, yeah. Bayern no. Munich, you know what I'm saying? Dortmund, you you name it. You name it. Leeds United, you name, how do you think they're coming up? How do you think they have been be, been able to afford? No, no, no. Oh. And also, the, the key thing that mm. these things will happen more and more because I think Abramovich opened up the whole Pandora's box because you see, really rich people get bored. I'm like, well, what do I do with all this money? Like, oh my gosh, let me buy because football is football is the biggest sport. Football has most of the fans in the world, and what is more fun? for a rich man than to have your own team look 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 it's 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 career mode it's career mode these rich people are playing career mode yes. basically with these teams you know the richest man in africa he wants to buy all yeah yeah um, um dangote from nigeria yeah. i don't know if that's gonna happen i don't know if that's gonna happen but he wants to buy arsenal you know what i'm saying that's his Wait, but again like you see if Arsenal fans want to get real 
Mm. Find a way of kicking out Stan Kroenke and bringing Dangote because someone like a Dangote, because he's a Nigerian and Nigerians love football, he will spend. Yeah. People are like, okay, how much do you need? Take that money, and buy me. Guy, this this I want to win a league. His pockets are deep too. I did some research earlier in the year, and his pockets very are deep, deep. Very deep. No, no, because basically, I know people who know him, and I know basically, I, I have family who know him personally. Okay, and they know that like no, this guy is like yeah, he's 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 got cash, he's got cash. So last last one, PSG by uh by Munich, PSG Borussia Dortmund, the biggest letdown team for the last couple of years, Borussia Dortmund. And I tell people never ever put your money on Borussia Dortmund. Never no. don't even do it. Don't even do it. It's a waste of time. They will no. win five nil the first leg and lose the second leg six one. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think you see Dortmund, um, their height was Jurgen Klopp. That was their height. And for me, look, I am a, like one of my favorite players is Jadon Sancho. I love Sancho, quality player. And this whole Erling Haaland is a very exciting young talent. He still needs to improve his on the ball skills, but he's in a, a very exciting as far as a goal scorer. He's so pep. Yeah. Um, and also, I'm a huge fan of Julian Brandt. I think Brandt is a quality player. But I just think that, you know, um, Lucien Favre, I think, is the wrong manager for this dude. I just don't think that he is that good at managing such situations. And I think if Dortmund wants to compete with Bayern, they can't do so with Lu Lucien Favre. And I think, see, the th this is the thing about, because we'll blend a little bit about PSG. If Neymar wasn't playing, I think Dortmund could win that tie. Maybe, maybe. Neymar is a, a very, very, you know, a big he's, difference maker. He's a, he's, he's a difference maker. But I think for Dortmund, um, they they got ripped by, by Bayern, you know. Every time they have a yeah, top yeah. player, we, we take him. Homo, we take him. Um, Gotze, we take him. Lewandowski, we take him. But the thing is, the thing is, to just argue on that topic really quick, Dortmund has shown that they have spending power. As of late, they spent over 100 mil, but you have to question, did they bring in the right players? Did they bring in the right players to actually beat Bayern Munich? You see what I mean? Are they doing the business? When when they when they bring in, okay, let's just make this example. Let mix the, let's and, and it'll show how much I look at these things. When you made the Nico Schultz deal permanent, Nico Schultz from Hoffenheim to yeah. permanent. Couldn't you have taken that money and made the Hakimi deal permanent? You you should have pushed for it because Real Madrid were never going to give Hakimi the, 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 the push ahead of Dani Carvajal, who is a Spain international uh, a club, club man through and through. You know what I'm saying? And I did look, I did realize, I didn't even notice before that Dani Carvajal left Real Madrid, went to Bayer Leverkusen for one season. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that, yeah. Yeah. And... He, he he can't you can't dislodge him. He Hakimi, who has been a big deal at Dortmund, has now moved to Inter for forty mil. Only forty mm -hmm. mil, crazy. You know? And it, 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 it some may argue that it could have been more expensive before this. No, no, but, but see, even on that whole Hakimi thing, I was always under the impression that he was going to go back to Real Madrid. So Dortmund was not yes. even thinking about keeping him. But I want to see this whole England thing that. So Dortmund didn't even inquire. Yeah, this thing happened this really thing quick. Have happened really quick, 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 yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. What what I read is that Dortmund could not match the forty million euro um, price tag. They could, they wanted him, but they they just didn't have the funds available. Okay, it's like okay, you and I go to buy something. You have a hundred bucks. I have sixty bucks, but I could have forty bucks next week. Who you think they're gonna sell the, the goods to? They're gonna sell the goods to you who could pay the hundred bucks or more up front. And yeah. that situation with Inter again goes back to they are backed by Chinese billionaires, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think so. so. Yeah. So 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 come on. You know, it's whoever has the deeper pockets always gonna win. You know what I'm saying? And we know these Italian clubs, they they like they they spend. They spend. If you look at the Italian transfers right now, they're spending a lot of money. They spend. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, look. It's like that inside deal was was huge. I didn't. We see. I didn't see that coming. Of course, the Cristiano thing was a because that is a huge. That was a huge, huge transfer. Yep. And 
it leads me to believe that because you see, for me, these things happen in cycles. Like Syria was dominant for a long time. Big time. Then, big we, big time. then it shifted yeah. to the Premier League. Then it then we now had La Liga really dominate. And now we're not maybe are having a bit of a, a chasm. So maybe you might be slowly be seeing very slowly the Syria slowly coming back because Inter Milan, they're re-emerging. If Napoli gets Osimen, that's that's one of the most interested young strikers. So yeah. what will be interesting in the next few years is, is what is the next league to now be dominant? Because I've always felt that Syria is just going to be sort of around there on the outside for the next few years. Because again, like I look at the example of, of AC Milan, who went from this to right down to yeah, the bottom. Yeah, yeah definitely. But, Syria hasn't won a Champions League since 2010, right? Since Inter done it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 2020. Oh, wow. 2020, since, yeah. then, since then, La Liga has been dominating. The Premier League has won two. Chelsea, Liverpool. We had um, Germany, even Bayern Munich won one. Bayern Munich getting one. You know, we, we, we all know League on it. They aren't getting any, you know. And we're on the topic of PSG right now. So just to, you know, go, you know, segue nicely. PSG into the last eight. After you know, what I mean, getting past an underwhelming Borussia Dortmund, do you think this is PSG's year? Could they win it? Could they win it? I want you to just keep it short under one minute. You know, um, we all know how you feel about PSG already, but do you think? You know, as I keep saying, look, man, it's it's so up that we started with the whole miracle at Camp Nou, and that was the video that really got you into yeah. this whole thing. Because for me, I feel that was a key defining moment, and I believe. See, for me, like, see, I'm a, I'm Nigerian. So in Nigeria, we believe in witchcraft. Yeah. And this thing called juju. I believe that there is a hex. There, and also, wait, even from where you're from, St. Vincent as well, because look, we are similar in our cultures. Yeah. So Definitely. that whole thing of juju, witchcraft, and everything. See, I believe in that stuff. So I believe that there is a footballing hex uh -huh. on you, PSG. You ever heard, you ever heard the word obia? No, 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 no. Okay, so obia is a word that is, is a simile to juju. Okay. It's a, it's a thing called Obia. You go to the Obia man and okay. you, you put a, a hex or a juju on somebody. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You believe that there, there's some type of Obia. And Obia, it, it goes to the French the French culture as well. It, it, it's, it could be some kind of Obia on PSG. 100, um, I mean. Basically, it's similar to Brazil and Germany and 7-1. Until Brazil win a World Cup, there is Obia and Juju on on Brazilian football, and I think mm. if, I think Brazil will not. I think that could be like a ten year hex. What they yeah. they did on them. So, but, but, but back back to PSG. Mm -hmm. This is the thing. PSG have never been knocked out of the Champions League while Neymar has been on on the pitch. Mm. So whenever you look at the second Neymar leg, always injured. He's always injured. Like okay. against um, what's what's it called against. Man United, he wasn't on the on the yeah, pitch. I remember that. I remember against Real Madrid, Madrid, he wasn't on the on the pitch. So, what I want is I want Neymar to be fully fit all the way through. Let's see what uh, happens. Uh, one off games, one off games. So he can be fit. You see, this is why I still don't believe that PSG will, will win it. Mm. But someone asked me that. Oh, who in this new format, one off games? Who does it suit the most? It really suits PSG. Yeah, because it suits PSG for 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 two reasons. It suits them because less of a chance of Neymar getting injured and, and so forth. It's less games, and also PSG are not reliant on their home form. You see, this format is horrible for for Barcelona that really rely on Camp Nou. Camp Nou, yeah, yeah, yeah. But and and this format would have been really bad for Liverpool, who rely on on Anfield. But for PSG, they're like one off game, a full team. We can beat anybody. We can beat anybody, but I just, yeah. I just don't see, I just, I just don't see PSG doing it. Neymar injured during last season's Copa America. They still won the thing. Yes, right? but PSG won't be able to do it. But no. if, if a certain phenom, the prodigy, by the name, the prodigy by the name of Kylian Mbappe. Mm comes big in that game like he needs he needs to he needs to live up to this expectation of being the it's next huge. It is huge. Yeah. It, it, it is like mm. no, no no as in like 
Mbappe is very because this is something that the Messi and Cristiano fans don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. And this is stuff that they really hate to, to, to hear. Mbappe already has a World Cup. If Mbappe can get a Champions League, mm -hmm. who has the better resume? Because people say, oh, look at the... Let's just put it... I know Messi and Cristiano have scored all the goals, all the Champions League. If Mbappe shows you a World Cup winner's medal, scoring in a World Cup final, single-handedly dumping Messi out of the World Cup, and he shows you a Champions League winner's medal, for me, that's a better resume. But than the thing anything is, else. Mbappe will win multiple Champions Leagues throughout his career because I don't think PSG is the last destination for him. Oh, no, no. It's, yeah. There you go. It's like, if he remains at PSG, I don't know about multiple, Real Madrid seems to be like, that is the destination. And Mbappe at Real Madrid, and so Mbappe at one angle, either Hazard or Vinicius at, at, at another angle, well, then this is something totally new. You know, that is what they to totally do. So, but because but the issue is that he has burst onto the scene. So, like, look, he was he was 17 for Monaco. Down City. They beat City, remember? Yeah. That, and also, I think, I think they said he's the youngest player to score in consecutive Champions League knockout games. The man, the man is just good. The man is just good. What he did, what he did at the uh, 2018 World Cup. Look, I'm, I'm working on a new channel to just talk about World Cup, right? Mm. And I'm hoping to have you on there in the future. Oh, for sure. I'll be there. I'll be there. Don't, I have give me the call. I'll be there. Give me the call. I'll be there. I haven't unleashed it yet, but I have Kylian Mbappe as the avatar kissing the World Cup. That's, that's you know, because this guy is going to be something, something great. But look, Double H, we have circle. We started, at, and you mentioned, we started with PSG Barcelona, and we have ended talking about PSG. I have right now maybe another three hours worth of conversation right here on this paper right here, and I want us to continue this another time. Oh, yes. I want us to talk, and I'm going to mention this to get the fans excited. I want us to talk about 2020 Ballon d'Or potential candidates. I want to, and we have to do this soon because I want to talk about the top five. So I'm talking about make some time. Let's do this maybe next week or something. And 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 and, and, and also we have to have. I think because of what we yeah. specialize in, we have to have a long conversation about the Euros yes. and break down the, the different countries. I think okay. that that's something that I definitely want to have a discussion. Well, on. The thing is about the Euros, I have to be honest, because we haven't had international football for some time. I'm kind of rusty. <laughs> so no, I have no, to... no, but, but, no, but the bit about this is that we're just looking at where the players are at now. That's true. That's true. That's so true. looking at like, forget about what they do for their countries. Mm -hmm. These individuals, like De Bruyne, again, we'll, we'll talk about this when we talk yeah. about Lando. De Bruyne has well, been I think, exceptional. I think, yeah, I think I'll be. I think I'll be ready for that. But we need to talk about Premier League top top six, top five race, Premier League relegation, and we have to talk about next seasons, how, how we look at next season. And I want us to do this pretty soon. That'll be a hot topic. It, it might take us only an hour to do, but it's, 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 it's really hot right now because, look, just a slight, small preview. Liverpool, they're true already. They're, but City, you could say City, run away. But the third, Leicester, 55 points. Chelsea, 54 Man United, 52. Wolves, 52. Even Sheffield, if they didn't start so badly, but they came back and pick up that big win there against Tottenham. 47 points. You have Arsenal in 40, 46 points. We have Tottenham and Burnley on 45 points with Everton, 44. It's tight. It's tight. Right. You, right. Europa League places, Champions League places are up for grabs. Plus, That's at the bottom, point. the relegation race is heating up. You know what I mean? They have one for Aston Villa. Norwich, who I think are already out, and Bournemouth. West Ham kind of maybe saved their skins with that win for Chelsea against Chelsea, but they're not they're not safe as yet. I still think West Ham is in the conversation, even Brighton. So we have to talk about this. We got to talk about this. You know, and I think this is a very nice way to end today's video. It would be a nice, tasty video for people to oh, watch. No, 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 because see, that's <laughs> it. We, we can't give guys everything. You know, we can't yeah, just exactly. give everyone everything. We've got to, we've got to exactly. always tease, a, a bit of a tease, a bit of a exactly. but it's a very good, nice tease of, like, the kind of content guys will, will, will be getting. Yeah. Because, yeah. No, but definitely, this is definitely something that we should be doing um on a somewhat regular basis, you know, because I just think, like, having yeah. 
the back and forth and the conversational thing. I just it makes for better content. And you know what? I have to commend you as well because there's there's look, there's not many people, and I say that all the time, who could go an hour, 40 minutes non-stop, no mistakes, no stalling, you know, just sharpness on point. You know what I mean? You bouncing off of me, I bounce off of you. It's so so look, man, it's all about chemistry and what makes a, 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 a good team, what 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 wins titles and such? Chemistry. 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 Chemistry, 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 chemistry. You know, yeah. I mean, no, 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 because again, it's like, I think specifically, hopefully, because against the Champions League, it's all going to be done in August. So I think specifically, you know, what would be very good is mm -hmm. after each game, obviously, yeah. I do my reviews, reviews, but we have to have like a round. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, 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 so after the second round games, we have like a specific round of we react. Quarterfinals, we react and we just react yeah. and just really dissect Look, all those games. And we, I mean, I mean, we put that out there. We're going, we're going to be doing this thing going forward, man. Definitely, definitely, we'll be doing this thing going forward. Um, and I'm telling you, we could go on and on and on and on and on, hmm. you know, nonstop. So I like to just thank you for you know taking the time. Thank you as well, man. Thank you for the time as well, bro. And yeah, definitely because I woke up very early today. I did a transfer video and all. I, I you know, I just like to get things done. You know, just yeah. like you. I know you like to cover your things. I like to cover my things too. And I do this just because I love doing this. It's something for me to do. It's a hobby. Like you're a kid, you just want to do things. That's how mm -hmm. I am. You know what I'm saying? And we, we're gonna be doing a lot more in the future, man. So, you know, guys, guys, thanks. Thanks, thanks for watching this video. I know I, yeah. I know a lot of people got to the end of this video because I love long videos myself. I love long form content. I'm not the type of guy to be like, yo, man, it's 30 minutes. Let's end this thing right now. Look, there could be a day we could go two hours. I don't yeah. care. You know what I'm saying? But guys, thanks for watching the video. Subscribe to Have Hope. Subscribe to Dominic Rich. Yeah, oh, yes, well, yeah. remember, guys, subscribe to Dominic. I mean, most of you guys probably know him from my thingy, but Dominic Rich, trust because if you like my content and what I do and and my holistic approach to football, you will like him because we approach it a very simple. Because, like, yes, we follow clubs, but we're not club merchants. We are basically put it this way: we are football fans first before we are fans of anything. We're always football fans first and foremost, which is which 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 which, which I think is is the key thing. Yeah. So, guys, what I want you to do: leave any suggestions in the comment section down below. Like the video. Definitely smash a like on the video. And, you know, I just appreciate your time. So until next time, I have this thing that I like to do. You know that. Until next time, peace out. Rich. Peace. And you peace, say, peace, you, peace, peace, peace. You, you like to say stay black. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, 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 no. I said to say peace out, stay true, and always, always stay black. Uh, definitely. Right, peace, peace, peace. Uh,